This episode brought to you by healthwithdronetech.com. Check out this special offer for my viewers. Collagen is revered for giving skin its strength and elasticity, along with its power to reduce wrinkles. This is why I love collagen. Not just regular collagen though, multi-collagen. What is multi-collagen? It's a solution for aging that America is going crazy for. Within days of trying multi-collagen, users report noticing a more youthful appearance, decreased wrinkles, thicker hair, healthier nails, and pain-free joints. I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. Try it out now for 51% off by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by visiting the links in the description or pinned comment. Understanding where coronavirus and how the pandemic began matters. A lot of the discussion about the lab leak, I think, was clouded early on, but we've come a long way from people dismissing this as a conspiracy theory to a lot of people taking this seriously, Meg. We have, John, and look, I do think it's important to remember that part of the issue when this was first being reported on and discussed back a few months after the pandemic had begun was that then President Trump and Mike Pompeo, uh, the uh, Secretary of State, both suggested they had seen evidence that this was formed in a lab and they also suggested it was not released on purpose, but they refused to release the evidence showing what it was. And so because of that, that made this instantly political. Oh boy, here we go again down one of CNN's alternate reality wormholes. Of course, we all know that anybody who even dared call it the China virus was set upon by the Democrat state media as racist, with some popular Democrats even going as far as to call it the European virus. The very same media suggested that calling it the China virus was an attack on Asian Americans and an alleged rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, which they blamed on Trump supporters. Some in the media even suggested that calling China communist or criticizing China at all was inciting anti-Asian hate crimes, implying that these attacks were being carried out by white Trump supporters and Republicans. But happens to be wrong. 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 The vast majority of anti-Asian attacks are carried out by non-whites, and this is according to the National Institute of Health. You would never know that by watching U.S. media. CNN, being defenders of truth, democracy, and reality-based, should know this. Oh, they do know it, but it doesn't fit their agenda. I'm going off on a tangent here, but my point is the media has done all they can to discredit and attack anybody suggesting that this virus came from China, much less the Wuhan lab. Anybody who does dare suggest it is smacked down with endless right-wing conspiracy theorist labels. But now we're gonna see a revision of history to cover up that the Democrat state media did indeed cover for China. The Trump administration learned that when you have burned your own credibility over and over again, people are not immediately going to to believe you, especially in an election year. Of course, of course. What the hell? She just admitted that they didn't believe him because it was an election year. Now who's making it political? Even though it was Trump constantly calling it the China virus and insisting that it could have come from the Wuhan lab. And uh, I, you know, I, I would say probably it was got, it got out of control. But you know, there's another case that how come they stopped all the planes and all of the traffic from going into China, but they didn't stop the planes and the traffic from coming into the United States and from coming into all over Europe. I mean, look at Italy. Look what happened to Italy. Have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, yes I have. Yes, I have. And I think that the World Health Organization should be ashamed of themselves because they're like the public relations agency for China. While it was the Democrat state media that made it political, by insisting that anybody suggesting it came from a Wuhan lab was racist, xenophobic, or a right-wing conspiracy theorist. And if you remember at the time, Joe Biden was constantly accusing Trump of, quote, rolling over for China and that he wasn't investigating. Except that this was a complete lie that even the Washington Post gave three Pinocchios. But yeah, it was Trump that made it political. What the hell is Joe Biden doing right now to investigate China? Oh, right, nothing. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! On the origins of COVID, there's a new Wall Street Journal story that three researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology were hospitalized with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common seasonal illness in November of 2019. That's something that is apparently known to U.S. Intel officials. So why isn't President Biden pushing for more access, more information to get to the bottom of exactly what happened? We are. 
Uh, and we have repeatedly called for the WHO to, to support an expert-driven evaluation of the pandemic's origins that is free from interference or politicization. But with 589,920 dead Americans, at what point does President Biden say, we don't want to wait for the WHO, we don't know what they're doing, this needs to be an American-led effort to get to the bottom of what happened? Well, first of all, we need access to the underlying data and information in order to have that investigation. And, and why not? But like, he talks all the time about how he's known President Xi for a long time. So why can't he just call and, and we and need ask them him for that information? I think you're misunderstanding how this process actually works. But yeah, it's Trump's fault that it's political. And another thing, she claims that the media dismissed the Wuhan lab theory because Trump made it political. But it wasn't just Trump calling China out. Many others were, including a Chinese virologist that had to flee the country. She was interviewed on Tucker Carlson's show, only to be dismissed and fact-checked by the defenders of democracy, truth, and reality. I'm sure it had nothing at all to do with politics and the fact that Tucker Carlson is the media's public enemy number one. You know who else knew, but failed to speak up when Trump was president? Saint Fauci. He knew about the coronavirus research going on in the Wuhan lab, yet when asked, he dismissed it and suggested he was certain it was a naturally occurring virus. Weird, because now all of a sudden he's saying that he can't discount the Wuhan lab theory. It's almost like these media organizations and their agents were being intentionally political. I do think we're in a different period of this, John, but I also think it's important to remember because I think it's getting reframed in a way that's just not true to what happened. I don't mean here. I right. mean in this, this broader debate by Trump supporters about what happened when this was originally raised. <laughs> so basically, don't believe your lying eyes and ears. Sure, it looks like we're Democrat Party hacks, but we swear that's not it. As if any of this has anything to do with Trump supporters. It just goes to show how lacking in self-awareness and how dedicated to upholding the narrative these propagandists are. That's all I have for this one. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow.